Hello there. I'm Professor Intrabhu Sekar. One of the learning codes in this workshop is for us to understand how to monitor cash using bank reconciliation and also to conduct a bank reconciliation. Generally, companies' money that the company receives and pay goes through the bank rather than keeping it in the company. It is a good practice because in that way cash is not being lost. It is held in the bank. Because bank becomes the medium of cash received and cash payment for the company, any cash that company records as cash in and cash out in the cash ledger should then be equal to the bank statement for the company in theory, in principle. But in practice, it is not the same. They are not identical. But through the reconciliation, we can identify why that difference occurs. So, for example, in bank reconciliation, there are two parts. First is, we are looking at the cash balance. Per the bank, in the bank, what is the cash balance? What has been re reported as the cash balance by the bank statement? At a given date, let's say 30th of June. And then, we will adjust that bank balance for reconciliation purposes with any deposits not recorded by the bank or any deposits that is not being paid out, any payments that is not being paid out by the bank and for any errors and then once we have done that we come up with an adjusted cash balance as per the bank. So the cash balance per bank is some of the deposits in transits, outstanding checks, less outstanding checks, and errors gives us the adjusted cash balance per bank. The second part of reconciliation is the cash balance that is recorded in the accounting information system. There could be some deposits, some collections that the bank has received not recorded in the accounting system. There also could be some payments that the bank has made by bank charges that is not recorded in the accounting system. When, if they are recorded, then there is an adjusted cash balance. So therefore, the adjusted cash balance per bank and adjusted cash balance per the company should ultimately be equal. That is called the bank reconciliation. It's reconciling to the bank. If I put it in another way, you start, there are two parts to bank reconciliation. You start with the cash balance per bank statement. And then manually add deposits which the bank has not recorded yet, but the company has recorded. And then deduct any checks that company has recorded as paid, but bank has not recorded as paid. Probably the check has not been presented. It's an unpresented check for withdrawal. So when those adjustments are done, we come up with an adjusted 
cash balance per bank statement. So that is the first part of the reconciliation, looking at the bank and starting with the bank statement balance and then we come up with a adjusted bank statement balance for cash. The second part is looking at the cash balance per the cash statement in the company, in the cash ledger. There could be deposits the bank has received and recorded, but the company has not. So manually, it is been added to that. And there could be deductions or decreases in cash that bank has recorded but the company has not recorded. For example, bank charges. Manually, that is deducted. So we start with the cash balance for the cash ledger in the company and then come up with the adjusted cash balance for the cash statement. And the adjusted cash balance per the bank statement should equal adjusted cash balance per the cash statement. That is called bank reconciliation. So here's an example. Bank part of the cash reconciliation. We start with the cash balance per the bank statement cash balance per the bank statement and then we add outstanding deposits and deduct unprecedented checks. Here's an outstanding deposit not recorded by the bank. We manually add it and then we deduct any checks company has recorded as payments but has not been presented to the bank for payments. We manually deduct them and then we come up with an adjusted cash balance per the bank statement. The second part is we start with the cash balance per the cash ledger in the company and then add any deposits recorded by the bank but not recorded by the company and we add them and we deduct any bank charges, any deductions for cash that the bank has recorded but company has not recorded. Here we deduct them here, manually deduct them. Once we have done that, add and deduct and then we also adjust for various errors we come up with an adjusted cash balance per books. So the adjusted cash balance per the company's book is 5048. An adjusted cash balance per the bank statement is 5048. And this reconciliation, these adjustments, and then checking one against the other is called bank reconciliation. This is a very common exercise that the companies conduct to ensure that the bank balance matches with the cash balance. And it is actually the adjusted bank balance per bank should match with the adjusted cash balance per the company's books.